Are you happy to be in the house of God this morning or this afternoon? I must confess to you that I am extremely conservative. But as I walked in the church and divine hour began to start, and a praise team began to lift their voices high and loud, the Holy Spirit began to fall upon me. And I couldn't help but to raise my hands and say, Glory, hallelujah! Jesus Christ is real today. Can you say amen? I'm a old person in a young man's body. So some of the things that I will articulate with you this morning may seem old school. But the fact of the matter is, is that that's where all the accumulated knowledge of the ages have come from. The pioneers, the infancy of our church, the great advent movement, everything that makes us a peculiar people is prominent today. And so I just want to thank you so much for allowing me to share with you. Now what I'm going to share may go against the grain of what you normally like to hear. Because see, you know, you realize many of you came here this morning and you had invested a lot of effort into getting dressed really nice. I mean, the ladies, you are whipped, your hair is whipped, you're sharp, and you wanted to make sure that your brothers and sisters at church recognize that you look good. Can you say amen? amen. The brothers is no different. You're looking sharp and dapper this morning, and you put on that special cologne, and you want to make sure that everyone smells you and looks at your nice haircut. Whatever reason you came this morning is not by chance. The devil knew that if he could prevent you from coming to church, he will keep you in his grasp and he will try to snuff out your life before you have an opportunity to give your heart to Jesus. We are living on the brink of eternity, church. Everything that we do right now is either preparing us for the seal of God or the mark of the beast. Did you know that we are at a time where prophecy is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. And it is the effort of Satan to make sure that every young person falls in love with Jay-Z and Beyonce, that every young person falls in love with Miley Cyrus, that every young person follows what Kanye and, and um, what's his wife's name, Kim is doing. And those are the gods that Satan has erected to distract the minds of the young, powerful children who are only born for one thing, and that's to hurl the soon coming of Jesus Christ. That's the only reason you were born. As a matter of fact, when you came into this church, you signed on the dotted line that you were sold out to Jesus. And when you're sold out to Jesus, you have a mission. You don't just come to church to praise and worship, to feast at the Father's table, you are to articulate what you learn here and go into your communities and uproot Satan's kingdom. Can you say amen? amen? Now I'm just getting warmed up and I have to slow down a little bit so that I can really acknowledge those who invited me this morning. I just want to thank from the bottom of my heart, Sister Jackie Robinson. It's a beautiful black name, historical name as well. But thank you, Sister Jackie, for having me and your dear husband, Brother Robertson, for introducing me. And also, I want to thank Rehoboth Seventh Day Adventist Church yeah. out here doing that thing in PA. Can you say amen? Yeah. Uh, also, your illustrious pastor, E. Earl Blackwell. It's a privilege to be standing in this pulpit to share with you this afternoon. As I said before, what I'm going to share may go against the grain of what we typically like to hear. You see, today is Health Emphasis Day. Now, I know you generational Adventists, and I know many of you know about the health message, and you, you know about 
the science of healing and all of that stuff. And many of you probably saying, oh no, I came on a wrong Saturday. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing about help because I got some chicken in the refrigerator right now. And when I go home, I'm busting it out. I got some curry go. I got some, yo, know, a, a piece of rice. And here it goes, another health sack. They're going to mess with my food. I ain't trying to hear it. Y'all laughing, but y'all know it's the truth. <laughs> you don't want to hear nothing about help. Because health is a tough, touchy, touchy subject. Because for years, it may appear that salvation is connected with what we have on the end of our spoons and forks. And so there is an opposition, there's an outcry to say, listen, we're saved by grace through faith. It has nothing to do with what we put in our bodies. So why are you having a special health day to tell me about what I should and should not eat? I ain't trying to hear it. Well, whether you like it or not, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation. If they would bring it on the screen, if that's possible. Um, really, my job as an elder, as a teacher, is to educate. So I'm not, I don't have the ability to make you whoop and holler and jump out of your seat. That's not what I do. I don't have the skill for that, but what I do do is I like to educate people in regards to the connection between the spiritual and the physical. And when you show that connection, we will find out that Christ's ministry was 90% healing and 10% preaching. Do you know we got it in reverse? We do a whole bunch of talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come to church. Show up. Collect the tithe and offering. And we go through this uh, dramatic, ritualistic process in church. And Christ was out in the streets. He was touching people. He was healing people. He was bumping into people whose faith far exceeded those in Israel. The captain of the host came to Jesus and said, Lord, speak the word and my servant will be healed. Do we say that? We say go to the nurse and go to the doctor. As if there's not a God who doesn't have the power to heal. Are you with me? The Bible says in Exodus 15, 26, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and do that which is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who does what? God is the one who heals. Then what do we have to do with this so-called health message that the Adventist church has purported or supported for years? How do you make that connection? It's very simple. Have you ever tried to talk to a drunkard? You ever tried to communicate with a drunkard? How, how successful were you? Completely unsuccessful. You know why? He's inebriated. He doesn't know what you're talking about. I know all about that. Been a Seventh Day Adventist for, I, I can't remember, since I was five. And you know, as a young person, you can't wait to break free of the church's shackles. And I want to see what was going on in the world. Just in case the PowerPoint doesn't work. Amen. And I thank God that the Lord has put it in my mind, everything that I want to share. Matter of fact, I have nothing to do with what I'm going to share with you simply because it is God that worketh in us to do his good pleasure. Isn't that right? Yes. So forget about me. Forget about 
anything that has to do with what you see here. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to your heart. As I was telling you, I understood what it means to be inebriated. I went out in the world and I drank and I smoked and I did everything I could possibly do. As a matter of fact, the Lord had blessed me to work with the young people in AYS and hard times came on my life and I told God I was gonna fix him. And I went into camping and I started getting high. And I went to this bar every single day. And for seven years straight, I stayed drunk and worked and had claimed to be a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. I smoked cigarettes like they was going out of style. I thought it was cool, I thought it was smooth. But guess what? There is a demonic force that attends every single cigarette that you put in your mouth, and it holds you captive so strong that when I finally decided, decided to quit, I cried like a baby because it was like losing my best friend. That's how powerful these things are. Satan is working in the laboratories right now. He is concocting toxic elements that will seduce you, that will get you hooked, that will embed you in habits so deep you cannot break free, but only through the power of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you right now, Satan is on a war path to fight against this church. Why? Because this church has been raised for such a time as this. This church has been raised to proclaim the everlasting gospel. This church has been been assigned the tremendous obligation of preaching what we call the three angels message. How many have ever heard it before? How many of you know it? Let's go to Revelation chapter 14 starting with verse 6. Do y'all know the verse? We should all know it all so well. It says, and I, come on, and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the what? The everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, to fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made the heavens and the earth, the sea and the fountains of water. Then the message goes further. Babylon is fallen. That great city, because it's made all nations drink of the wine and the wrath of the fornication. And then the third angel's message goes like this. If any man worships the what? And his and receive his in his forehead and his head, the same shall what? Drink of the wine and the wrath. Oh man, I got some true evidence up in here. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the screen very quick. That was just a rehearsal, all right? Is that okay with y'all? Okay, good. Um, my message this morning has to do with sideline keepers. There are people in the church right now who's been in, been in this church for 40, 30, 20 years. And oftentimes, as leaders, we face this issue. As elders, deaconess, AYS leaders, uh, people who hold positions in the church, we need help. We need people to take on the responsibility of running the church. But too often, we go up to our dear sister and say, Sister, I'm trying to get the children's story together. You think you got a, 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 a children's story you can give to the church? Oh, no, I don't do that. No, sister so-and-so is good at that. I don't do that. Yet, this woman has at least five kids. And they don't know how to give a children's score. I'm not picking on you, sis, because I don't know how to give children's score. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you have people who have been asked to give a prayer. Oh, I don't pray publicly. You've been asked to do all type of stuff in the church, but you come to church, you show up with your Cadillac or your bins or whatever you have, your clothes dressed nice, and you sit in the pew and you hold that position down and dare somebody to get in your spot. When you show up to church, nobody better not be in my spot. And you may not say it, but you'll look. You'll stand there and wait. <clears throat> Am I telling the truth? But when there's a evangelistic crusade, 
or when some exciting singer is coming or when a praise team gets up there and blow, you swing in your hands and you shout for joy, you saying hallelujah, but your lifestyle is not in harmony with your profession because if you're really real and you're really praising the Lord, then you're actively engaged in his church and you're wanting to do anything that anyone asks you to do in the house of God. Can you say amen? Stop leaving it up to the pastor. He only one man. He cannot, he cannot do everything in this church. Every member needs to be actively engaged in service in some capacity or another. Amen? Amen. And one more thing I want to say before I go to this slide. The young people have been blessed with the gift of music. And they can really, really sing. But guess what? That's not all they can do. It's good for us to come and lift our voices and, and praise and adoration to the Lord. But they know how to read. They know how to teach if you give them the lesson. They know how to lead out. Give them an AYS program and let them do something for the Lord so they'll keep them in there. And Jay-Z won't steal their mind. Um, am I telling the truth? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Let's go to the next slide. We have to move from the bench and stop being sideline keepers. You know what's so funny about sideline keepers? They always got the answer, but they never get in the game. They never lift a finger. They'll even call on the phone to find out who's preaching that church. And if it's not to their liking, you know what they're going to do. Oh, I'm watching Church Pond. Oh, I'm watching Praise Vision at home. No, you're not. You're watching TV. Straight up. You're watching TV, and you fall asleep on TV, and you eat yourself into oblivion, and then wake up real fast to rush the sun down and say, praise the Lord, we had a good Sabbath. And you go straight out and do the worldly stuff you've been doing from week to week. The Bible says this clearly. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon table, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but, but at, at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Habakkuk 2, 1, 3. What in the world is this text talking about? In other words, God has set us as watchmen on the walls of Zion. You didn't come into this message by chance. You didn't just accidentally bump into this message. The Holy Spirit led you here, and he's given you a specific task to do, young and old. And that specific task is to lead people to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What you need to do is now, you need to understand the training process by which you are to do it. Before Christ sent the disciples out, he had to train them. He had to show them how to heal, how to trust, how to faith. How to have faith. How to have all of these ingredients that make a whole man. And so God is warning us now that we're going to stand on our watch. Now we're going to wait for the Holy Spirit to tell us who to touch, who to contact, who to pass out a literature tract to, who to give information to on our jobs, in the streets, wherever we may be. We are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? You're not too young and you're not too old to do this. And so... We have been told that the prophecies will be fulfilled. And in connection with our message, the three angels' message, there has to be something that goes with that because it has to open the door so that people will listen. Let me tell you what I mean. And I want to make it very simple and very clear. Hello, my name is Kenneth Bolden, and we're out in the neighborhood. And uh, we're passing out tracts, and you know, we want to see if you need prayer and, and scriptures and everything. Bang! <laughs> Did y'all get that? Yeah. No, it's good again. I don't need prayer. I don't want your Bible studies. My family's in here sick. I got an uncle sitting over there that's a convalescent. He can't get up out of bed. I got diabetes. I have heart disease. I got diverticulosis. I have cancer. I don't want to hear about 
the Sabbath. I don't want to hear about the state of the dead. I don't want to hear about the 2300 day prophecy. I need healing. We got it backwards. God has blessed his church with what we call the health message. Okay? This health message is designed to open doors to provide for their needs, to address their sickness, and then we can introduce them to Jesus Christ. We're doing it backward. That's why this church ain't busting at the seams like it should be. There's a nice amount of people here to go. Praise the Lord. Let's say praise the Lord for that. But guess what? It should be so crowded that when sick people come, they'll bust open the roof to raise somebody down here so that they can be healed. Can you say amen? It happened in the Bible days. So we need to become what you call roof rippers. We need to be bringing people to Jesus at all costs, tearing down roofs to get them to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, that. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, the next one. Yeah. All right, here we go. Listen to this statement. Crowd and clear-cut pro uh, prophetic truth. The perils of the last days upon us. And in our work, whose work? Our work. In our work, we are to warn the people of the danger they are in. Let not the solemn scenes which prophecy has revealed be left untouched. If our people were half awake, if they realized the nearness of the events portrayed in the revelations, a reformation would be wrought in our churches, and many more would believe our message. They don't believe us because we don't believe ourselves. We don't believe our message. We don't believe that God has chosen us as the apple of his eyes. We don't believe that prophecy is being fulfilled. And when you don't believe, God can use you. Extreme. From the light that God has given me, I know that his cause today is in a great need of a living representative of Bible truth. The ordained minister, what did it say? The ordained minister alone are not equal to the task. God is calling Bible workers, church folk, people, put on your walking shoes. Get out of the church and get into the streets. Calling for Bible workers and other consecrated laymen of very talent who have a knowledge of present truth to consider the needs of the unworn cities. Are y'all getting this? There should be 100 believers actively engaged in personal missionary work where now there is but one. And the past is wearing itself out, bouncing back to one church after another, trying to minister trying to get Bible studies, and the church members are sitting there, okay, who's, who's preaching next? <laughs> Who has a program today? I came to church for a good show. Yeah, come on now. You are the show. Yeah. If you won't show up, ain't nothing popping off, right. as the young people would say. <laughs> Time is rapidly passing. There's much work to be done before, listen to this, this is so powerful and so potent, before satanic opposition shall close up the way, there was a time where you could solicit and there would be no issue. You cannot go up to people's house and pass out literature. You cannot put it in their mailbox. You cannot do these things because the times is now forbidden. Matter of fact, the prophet God says this, what we had to do in the times of peace, prosperity, and safety, yeah. we will now have to do under the most discouraging and forbidding circumstances. Right. We are in a dangerous time where you, as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian or a Christian, cannot cross the light. That's right. You will get fired if you witness on your job. Yeah. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Okay. Every agency must be set in operation that present opportunities may be wisely improved. The next screen. Listen to this. We said this already. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I brought upon the Egyptians, for God is the one that heals. Do you know that the Egyptians suffered 
from the exact same diseases that we suffer from today? They did an excavation over in Egypt, and they took the tombs of the old ancient Egyptians, the pharaohs, and they did DNA testing on their bodies and in their bones, and they discovered that they could find traces of cocaine, they could find traces of heroin, they could find traces of tobacco, they could find the fact that they had high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes, diverticulosis, hemorrhoids, you name it. They did all of that through the DNA of an old Egyptian. So what God said was true. If we obey his health laws and keep all of his commandments, we won't have disease. Amen. The reason why there's disease in the house of God is because we fail to see the connection between the whole man and the spiritual man. Amen. Amen. I'm going to show you the connection. It's really simple. Remember I told you about the trumpet? Him being inebriated affected his mind. Isn't that true? Do you know the body is the habitation of the mind? The only way that heaven communicates with us is through the mind. If we cut off the connection with our heavenly father in our mind, then it affects our spirituality. Can you see the connection? You can't walk around violating natural laws and think that you are not going to eventually violate moral laws. They go hand in hand. Do you know that the law of God is written on every nerve and tissue and cell of the body? To violate and to destroy your physical constitution is self-murder. It's actually killing. You say, oh, brother, brother Kenny, now you're going way too far. This has nothing to do with our salvation. No, not yet. Let's continue on. Next slide. There are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there is only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, purity of life, and a firm trust in God are the remedies for the one of which thousands are dying. Yet these remedies are going out of date because their skillful use requires work that people do not appreciate. I don't want to do anything to help my body. Just give me a pill. I ain't taking no charcoal. I ain't taking no aloe vera. I ain't taking no cayenne pepper. I'm not taking any of that stuff. Just give me some drugs. Oh, by the way, what's the difference between street drugs and pharmaceutical drugs? How many of you say there's a difference? Come on now, y'all. No. One, one is what? One is regulated. One is legal. And one is not legal. Which drugs are y'all taking? Don't, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Young people, leave that ecstasy alone. Don't say nothing. Guess what? What's the difference between a crackhead, a heroin addict, and the person who is on blood pressure medication. Y'all know the difference? What? The crackhead and the heroin addict will either kick or die. The person who is taking blood pressure medication is a drug addict for life. So who's the real drug addict? Yeah, come on I'm not trying to be funny. This is real. This is how confused we are as a people. You go in a store right now, I, I give this illustration all the time. You go in a grocery store and you're health conscious. I read my labels. And you go in and you read the labels of the bread, and you read the labels on the boxes and everything. You want to make sure that there's no monosodium glutamate in there and no dye red and dye yellow and all of that stuff. And you know that that stuff is toxic. You know that it's garbage. You know that it's all fillers and additives and crap in that stuff. But you want to make sure that you avoid it. And you don't buy that product if it has the stuff in it that you don't want. But you will go to the doctor, and he will give you a prescription. And on the back of that prescription is the contents of the ingredients that's there. The names are so long, you can't even pronounce them. So what do you do? Ignore it. The doctor says, it's good for me. Did you go online and look at the effects of the ingredients that's in the drug? Why do we poison ourselves? A good friend of mine always says, you can't poison yourself back to health. You can't 
take a toxic drug, put it in your mouth, and say, praise the Lord, it's going to heal my liver. It's going to destroy your liver. Yeah. We are responsible for our physical constitution. We are going to have the answer to what we do in the body. Amen. Did you know that? Amen. Now, are you going to go to hell for it? No, no. Because the Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful in what? Yes. To forgive us our sins and to what? Yes. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All of us in here at some point in our life, with the exception of maybe one, have taken drugs before. I've smoked a lot of weed in my life. I smoked and smoked and smoked. And I drank my liver to death. Me and my buddies used to have a joke about where our liver was. Because it was running around in the yard somewhere. We had drank ourselves to death. But guess what? God is a God that can give you victory in your life. You do not have to be a slave to illicit drugs. You do not have to be a slave to sex. You do not have to be a slave to rap music. You do not have to be a slave to pop music. You do not have to be a slave to oldies but goodies. You do not have to be a slave to an intimate relationship that you know is not sanctioned by God. We can be free in Jesus, and he can give you victory like you've never experienced before so that you can experience what we call a natural high, like I was feeling this morning. Like I told you, I'm conservative. I don't jump and shout, but I couldn't contain myself because the praise team was getting. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Lord, I wish you on all things that thou mayest what? So it's God's will for us to be sick. Are you sure? You ask the sister in the church, sister, how you doing this morning? Praise the Lord. I'm doing all right. I'm still struggling with this sickness here, but you know the Lord is good. God is not the author of sickness. You do not have to claim that in the name of Jesus. You can have power over disease through his name because it's only God that heals. There's no power in me, Brother Dinkin, none whatsoever. But through Jesus Christ, I can bring restoration, education, and healing to God's people. Amen. What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. You can't just do anything with this inhabitation that God has given you. You can't just violate natural laws and say, well, Lord, forgive me. No, it doesn't work that way. We have to answer. We have to be accountable. At some point, it is going to be called upon us to give an account of everything that we've done in this life. Is it not true? Yeah. Amen. 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 For ye are bought with the price, therefore glorify your Father in your body and in your spirit. Okay? Which are God. If any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God have mercy on. <laughs> Not the God that I serve. My God don't do that. I came in this church this morning, and I woke up and started on my way. And I was excited, because I know my God would not destroy me no matter what I did. No matter what I'm doing, and I will continue to do it, because I'm saved by grace. <laughs> If any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Thank God I did not write the Bible. The Bible speaks for itself. Like I'm praying, I'm praying that you will invite me back. But if you don't, at least I got my shots on. <laughs> Boy, come near this church, never again. That's all right. You know, I am a lion hunter. And when you're a lion hunter and you're in the jungle, you got to keep your eye on the lion. And you want to make sure that you focus. An antelope might jump out of there, a rabbit may jump, you know, squirrels and rats and stuff run across your feet. You can't reach down there and start shooting all of this. But that ain't going to work. You got to keep your eye on the lion. And Satan is a wildy foe. And if we don't keep our eye on him, then I'm telling you right now, he will sneak up on you and decapitate you. And that's what he wants to do anyway. So we keep our eye on the line. Say amen. Amen. 
Amen. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Okay. I can see the Lord's providence that the medical missionary work is to be the great entering wedge. What did I say? How many know what a wedge is? I do construction. And at some times, at particular times, I want to make sure that the door is plumb. And so I have what you call little wood chips or little slithers that are called wedges. And this permits me to adjust and move and manipulate the angle of the door, whatever it is that I'm installing, so that I can get in and that door can close properly. A wedge is also something where you take your foot and you put it into the door. When you put that foot into the door, it opens up the door to the individual's home by talking about help. You can't come with spiritual. Do you know why? The Holy Spirit is withdrawing his presence from the earth. People don't want to hear about God. But they do want to be healed. Why do you think Obamacare's um, health package is so important today? That's the main subject. People don't care about nothing else. Politics, they know all the politicians are liars. They know that they're not going to do nothing for this economy. But they're concerned about health care because all of us want to live. Amen. Nobody wants to die. So, yeah, what you got for me? What you got, Obama? What you going to deliver for my family, my loved ones? We all want to have health. So, it's a wedge whereby the diseased souls may be reached. The evangelization of the world is the work that God has given to those who go forth in his name. They are to be co-laborers with Christ, revealing to those ready to perish his tender, pity love. God calls upon thousands to work for him, not by preaching to those who know the truth. Going over and over and over. I heard this before. Oh, yeah, I heard this sermon again. Oh, again and again. And again. Over and over the same ground. But by warning those who have never heard the last message of mercy, work with a heart filled with, earth, with an earnest longing for souls. Do medical missionary work. Thus, you will gain access to the hearts of the people. The way will be prepared for a more decided proclamation of the truth. You will find that relieving their physical suffering gives an opportunity to minister to their spiritual needs. That is the method that Christ used. Why are we trying to reinvent the method that Christ used through our evangelistic efforts? We want to give out gifts. We want to bribe people to come up to the Lord. And most of the people in the urban cities ain't got no money anyway, and they want some food. So yeah, they're going to come to your crusade. Yeah, they're going to come and show up because their mind is on that bread. That's right. We have to give them something that they will never forget. Amen. And that's healing the body. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the next one. The medical missionary work brings to humanity the gospel of release from suffering. There's thousands of people suffering out here in the world. It is the pioneer work of the gospel. How many of you know the word pioneer? Pioneers are someone who goes before. Isn't that right? It goes before you even start talking about Jesus. You even start talking about the Holy Spirit. You even start talking about any of the doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The health message goes in before that. It is the gospel practice, the compassion of Christ revealed of this work. There is great need, and the world is open for it. God grant that the importance of medical missionary work shall be understood, and that new fields may be immediately entered. This stuff was written over 150 years ago. It is nothing that I devised or came up with. Amen. It's impossible for me to even think this way. We've had the blueprint. Do you know that we should have been in the kingdom of heaven by now? Yes. But God's people took a detour course. Yes. Just like the children of Israel, when it was only supposed to take, what, 10 days to get to the promised land, and they ended up in the wilderness for 40 years? We've taken a detour, church. Don't y'all want to get out of this place? Aren't y'all ready to get out of this place? Yes. Well, we need to follow the blueprint so we can usher in the coming of the Lord. Yeah. It can be done. No, let me say this. It will be done. Amen. With or without us. Yeah. 
You know why? It's going to be an army of young people Amen. who are going to shake off Amen. Tupac yeah. and Baby and Lady Gaga yeah. and all the stars in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. They're going to see their true value. And they're going to say, you know what? I don't have to look like the world. I don't have to look like the dope dealers on the street. I don't have to bring my pants all the way down to my knees so when dogs get after me, I'm running like this. I don't have to look that way. I don't have to cock my hat back like this. I don't have to have clothes just drooping all off of me. I can be an onward Christian soldier. I can hold my hand up high. I can go into the community and watch in the projects of New York and the projects of Philadelphia and walk through there with courage because the King of Kings and the Lord of Glory is with me. And every game group that's there will see what you have and they'll want it. They want what we got. All we need to do is stop being ashamed and go ahead and give it to them. The medical missionary work is the right hand of this gospel. It is necessary to the advancement of the cause of God, as through it, men and women are led to see the importance of right habits of living. The saving power of truth will be made known. Every city is to be entered by workers, trained to do medical missionary work as the right hand of the third angel's message. God's method of treating disease will open the door for the entrance of present truth. Use his method, have success. Try to do it in your own strip, we hear way too long. Yes. Really simple. Next one. Okay. I'm going to spend a little time. I don't want to hold y'all too long because I have a disease and it's called talk a lot. <laughs> and once it gets started, it's hard to stop. So I'm going to expedite time as fast as I can so y'all can eat. And for people who are diabetical and stuff, you know, they can go ahead and get that sugar content. Okay. We have come to a time where only the health team of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. Did y'all read that? We have come to a time where only the first elder should take hold of medical missionary work. We have come to a time when every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. The world is a laser house filled with victims of both physical and spiritual disease. Everywhere people are perishing for lack of the knowledge of the truth that have been committed to us. You know this stuff for years. Do you know when probation closes, the people who have never heard our message before will come up to you if you are not saved and say, you knew, you knew all of this time and you didn't warn us, you knew that the mark of the beast was coming. You knew that they would legislate laws to bring about Sunday worship and that every man, woman, boy, and girl will have to make a decision on whether they're going to receive the commandments of God or obey the traditions of man, whether they're going to follow Jesus all the way and exalt his commandment or whether they're going to uh, defect. Join race with the opposition and become the most bitterest enemy of their former brethren. Mm. That's right. Come on. You know why you become an enemy of your former brethren if you don't stay in God's message? Because you hated it from the gate. You sat in church for years and couldn't stand the message. And you couldn't wait for an opportunity to say, I can't stand them people. That's what's going to happen. It's happening even as we speak. that they may realize there's so many quotes that I can give you. And over the years, we have failed to follow the blueprint. In our institutions today, we're training young people to get an education, to be successful, to be, to be doctors, lawyers, nurses, uh, business owners, engineers, and they're doing this. But their job is more important than the proclamation of the gospel. And you go through your whole career only dedicating every other Sabbath to the service of God. God did not call you to be successful in this world. He called you 
to be his missionary. Yes. Young people used to be trained to be missionaries in our institutions. Amen. Did you know that? Yes. Go all the way back. They didn't go to the institution so that they can own a business, so they can be a part of a Fortune 500 company and kiss the bosses behind all the way up the ladder. That wasn't God's plan for young people. You were supposed to minister to people all around the world. You were supposed to reverse their diabetes, their heart disease, their diatribulosis. You were supposed to have skills as tradesmen. You were supposed to be able to fix cars, to be able to repair buildings, to be able to do plumbing, electrical, and all of the skills that are necessary to sustain your family and to sustain the ministry. But we accepted this handbag that the world gave us. We got so far off track, we don't, know, we don't even know where we came from. God help us to revisit our educational system, go back and do the research so that we can find out what God would have us to do to expedite his coming. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. As religion, aggression, subversive liberty of our nation, those who would be stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their sake, they should, while they have an opportunity to become intelligent in regards to diseases, this causes prevention and cures, all those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. Do you see this, young people? If you become intelligent, in regards to diseases, the causes, preventions, and cures, you will get paid. You don't have to go to Fortune 500 companies. You don't have to work your way up the ladder and check in. You can be free in Jesus. You can be a missionary worker. You can make your own schedule. You can do whatever it is you want to do because you don't have to punch in the clock. It is Satan's design to keep us punching clocks and never be about our father's business. I told y'all y'all were going to invite me back. It's all good. Real. Take your time. Take your time. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need your help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. The shortness of time demands an energy that has not been aroused among those who claim, we claim to believe the present truth. How many of you know what present truth is? Okay, very quickly. Present truth is whatever prophetic event or thing we are supposed to do during the period of time in which we live. For Elijah, when he told them that it wasn't going to rain for three and a half years, but according to his word, that was present truth. Them people didn't get no rain. When John the Baptist came up, he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Behold the Lamb of God. He ushered in the coming of the Messiah Yeshua, and Jesus Christ came, and he did what he was supposed to do. That was present truth. But today, God has given us a message. This message is like this. We have been called out from among Babylon. The word Babylon means confusion. We have come out of those systems who rejected the Sabbath message, those systems who wanted to make friends with the Roman Catholic entity, who wanted to Forget about the past history of millions of Christians being slaughtered to death. Forget about all that Rome has done. Let's just be friends again. Let's all unite under Jesus. It's called an ecumenical movement where all of the churches start to look like each other. We are not distinctive no more. Why should anybody come to this Seventh-day Adventist church? Because we ain't no different than the other church that's next door to us. We act the same, we trust the same, we do the exact same thing, we do everything that the other church is doing. They say, well, I don't need to leave my church. There's nothing peculiar about you. Peculiar is good, but it's not weird. We are to be peculiar people. This is our message. We've abandoned it because we want to be like the other church. You can. Because eventually you will be worshiping on Sunday and don't know why. I'm just getting along. No. Do you know there's only one church in existence right now that exposes the beast power according to Revelation 14? And that's us. The moment we stop doing what God has told us to do, we just merge right into the other apostate Protestant organizations. We have no difference. 
I know, I told y'all, I was a young man in an old man's body. Or, how did I say that backwards, didn't I? That's all right. I'll fix it later. Our young people need to be able to preach this message. They need to be able to stand on the street and warn them that there is a National Sunday Law coming to every soul that is going to be tested on. Why do you think the United States is over in the Middle East right now? Do you know why? Do you know why there's so much war going on over there? Do you really understand why? The Islamic nations are many, many people. And in order for the United States to bring about a world religion, they have to put in subjection those Islamic countries because they don't believe in our way of life. They don't believe in the Western way of life. They don't believe in Christianity. They believe in Muhammad. They believe in Islam. And so the United States by force is exercising all the powers of the first beast before and is going around the world and is whipping everybody into the shape. And once everybody is unifer, unified, now Rome can come through and they will lay a carpet for the Pope of Rome and he will be the religious leader around the world and everybody will wander after the beast. Everybody. Unless you are a seven-day Adventist Christian who have the faith of Jesus and keep the commandments of God, according to Revelation 12, 17. This is the test. It would be a shame for me to preach a whole sermon and not warn us of these things. It's a shame. Our message has to be sounded like a trumpet. And that's my job. That's what God has called me to do. I'm closing on this. I would like you to come back in the afternoon because I really want to get into the science of healing. If you can make it back in the afternoon, by God's grace, I can tell you how to reverse every major chronic disease within an hour's time. Amen. I know y'all said that's ridiculous. You're not a doctor. You're not qualified. Um, you know, uh, you haven't been to school for eight years and you haven't done, you have got your masters or your doctors. How are you qualified? I can tell you because I know the blueprint. And when you follow the blueprint, you understand the two sides of healing. But let me close with this. <clears throat> I was doing health lectures all over the place. I was actively engaged in AYS, doing plays and skits. And I had some good training down at Oakland College with a lot of theologians. Um, I sat in arguments with people arguing about uh, the open and shut door, arguing about um, whether or not uh, uh, Jesus Christ is going to come at a particular time. And, you know, the pros and cons, all of that was going down at Oakwood University. And as I navigated my way through, there were some things that I never understood. And I came up here to New Jersey, and I visited my Olive Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I ran into some brothers that were standing there. And these brothers was like, yo, man, you on fire for Jesus. I'm like, yeah, what's up? So they said, listen, there's some things you need to know. I was like, what's that? Seventh-day Adventist all my life. What do I need to know? You know, I, I like to move. I ain't gonna sit around all day long yik yakking about this, that, and the other, about our message. I know it. It's like, no, man, why don't you come up to the house for a Bible study? I said, all right. So they came, and for the first time, I heard the health message. For the first time, I heard that you can reverse diabetes and heart disease by using natural treatment. I found out the anatomy and physiology of the body and how the body, the body can heal its own self. The body is a self-cleansing, self-purifying machine to help it make an effort to save it from auto intoxication and or self-destruction. I was taken to the digestive system, where digestion begins in the mouth. It goes into a non-inch tube called the esophagus, and then it goes into a pink shirt and opens and goes right into the stomach, to the upper part of the stomach where resin and pepsin is spewed in there as enzymes to break down the food, and then it went into the second part of the stomach where the 
complex carbohydrates by hydrochloric acid is digested and it moves into the duodenum and into the duodenum that's where the bowel from the liver and the bowel from the pancreas goes in to break down that food and make it sugar so that the body can use it and it goes right into the small intestine with a little tiny finger-like projection called the villi. and the villi are responsible for absorption and then I finally discovered that once it was done absorbing the food that the body needed then the waste product will go into the large intestine and once it goes into the large intestine, it goes to the uh, ileocecal valve. And from the ileocecal valve, it goes up the ascending colon to the transverse colon, down the sigmoid region to the descending colon, out the rectum, and right out of the anus. That's the whole process of digestion. And I started learning all this wonderful stuff. And I was like, man, man, why are we... Why, why we heard this in church? We need to hear this in church. And so I started doing health lectures. And I was getting all kind of crazy looks, like, yeah, 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 yeah. We heard that before. And I'm like, y'all are not excited. And they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. I'm still putting my fish. Listen, it's not about me. It's not about sugar, eggs, milk, cheese. It's about being sold out to Jesus. Amen. When you're sold out to Jesus, whatever he asks you to do, you want to do it because you love your body, you love your mind, you love everything about Jesus. Just like when you're in a relationship with your husband or wife, you don't do it because, well, I better let that one alone. <laughs> Sometimes. We do it because we just have to. Yeah. But we don't really love that person. Matter of fact, we wish they would disappear. Oh. Y'all act like y'all don't know nothing about that. And that's good. You don't praise the Lord. That's how relationships are going these days. People are getting involved with each other. They can't stand each other. But because their mama hooked them up or their daddy hooked them up and they don't want to look bad in the church, they just live out a miserable existence with each other. There's no love in the home. There's nothing but routines. There's nothing but a bunch of formalities. And when y'all say goodnight, you do this. That's torture. Anyway. This is specifically to the young people. This church is full of young people who have tremendous minds, tremendous talents and ability. And I'm bringing a challenge to the Rehoboth Assembly of this church this afternoon. Is that if you truly want to see your church grow, as adults, we need to get with our children and we need to find out what their interest is in this church. As a deacon, as an usher, as a singer, as an instructor, whatever it is, and train them. Yes. Give them something to do besides just singing. Yes. Give them something to do. Amen. And don't have a social forum in the afternoon where they get to play basketball <laughs> and volleyball and all the stuff that they do at their schools all week long. Come on. You're not impressing them. <laughs> you know what they're doing? What? Come on. Hey, hey, yeah, that's right. Basketball game one, they walking in the middle of the court yeah. while the ball was flying down. <laughs> this is a true story. I was sitting next to these two young ladies at church. One was sitting on this side, one was sitting on this side. They would not talk to each other. I looked down, they were looking at their phone, texting each other. Yeah. <laughs> they slaves! They slaves to this! Because their parents is not taking the time to show them there's something outside of this world inside of space. I told my kids, my older ones, I will throw that phone out the window. If you can't look me in the eye when you talk to me, I will throw that phone out the window. I will throw the TV and the video games out the window because I love you enough that when you get old, you can do what you want. But why are you in my career? <laughs> you gonna do what I say to them. You can ask my older daughter that to this day. I was like, Deuces. See you later. <laughs> I, don't, I ain't scared of no kids. Okay. I, ain't, I ain't scared of no kids. They ain't gonna run my house. Come and game bang all you want to. I know all about game bang because I'm from Chicago and we grew 
grew up with a game called Excite. And we had signs and everything. All to the sky must die. Right up high, Excite. We used to walk through the streets and all that. That don't mean nothing. When you come over to my crib in the name of Jesus, I'm going to take you right through your crib. Only did things to him, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Come on up here. Come on, don't 
be ashamed. Don't worry about what your father's going to think. Don't worry about if, if your parents are going to all of a sudden pounce on you and say, okay, all right, now you need to get yourself together like the preacher said. No, 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 no. This is between you and Jesus.
so I ask you, Lord, that you would give each young person, each men and though, and each elderly person the power to make the transition in their life from me. Lord, I ask you that you would imbue us with the power of the Holy Spirit so that our lives will reflect what we profess. Lord, we know we made the best of ourselves. Some of us are just torn on the floor. Lord, Lord, we, we've been struggling with habits and, and problems and we're suffering with disease. Lord, we're just all messed up. We know we are. Heal us. Heal our minds so that we can be saved in your kingdom, Lord. Please don't leave us down here. Please, Lord. We know we ain't no good. But you are good and you promised that you would take us. But all we need to do is submit to you. Lord, help everybody up here to understand that the decision they make is written in heaven. And no matter what people say to them, that they should be determined that they're going to make it happen. And then when it's all said and done, save each and every individual in this church. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Have a seat.